The only thing I insist is you don't call me late for dinner because I really enjoy the food. Right? So I want to start off with a true story. Um, I really don't like writing poetry a lot, but I like talking a lot. And I figured out that um, I'm pretty good at poetry and it gives people an excuse to give me a mic. And so then I can kind of talk about the things that I enjoy talking about. Um, but because I don't really like writing, and I'm a child of like um, Marvel Comics and science fiction books, my uh, favorite author, Octavia E. Butler, I was reading, a, uh, I was reading an essay by her on writing, and she said that talent wasn't enough, that you had to have a positive obsession. You had to have something that makes you have to write all the time. Um, and I figured out that social justice was one of mine, and I also figured out that the biggest injustice to me is that being that I refer to as the grand architect of the universe is not on her throne. And I think there's something wrong with that. So I like to talk about, you know, I, I just like to write love poems, poems and talk about my love for uh, uh, women in general, but especially the black woman because she's the mother of civilization. How do I explain the nature of love? The elements that we, sh the, this energy that we share, the elements that ride upon the equals, earth, water, fire, and air, come here, beautiful black woman, because it's just you and I in this verse. This attempt at a love poem, when it suddenly dawned upon me, I'd have to express this as love letters in order to really show them so the others would understand. You see, the love you be cannot be seen except through the eyes of this black man. You see, my mind is your mind, and you already know that between us, words are meaningless and cease to exist, so imagine my dilemma. Standing here at the People's Music Network gathering in the heart of Manhattan with the need to explain this, energy called love, the undercurrent of life's flow. I mean, think about it. Words or sounds uttered that travel upon the breath of our spirit, so how am I supposed to explain this when the mere sight of it takes my breath away? I mean, how will all the others hear it? It's ill. I wake up in the morning listening to the birds, their whistles, their chirp, their song, as they call me towards another day with you and the light of the sun weaves through my blinds, casting shadows on my wall. It forms letters that spell your name and say you and I are one and we can double be two. I know it's not quite clear yet, Queen, but give me a second. It will be by the time I'm through this letter. In fact, all words and all letters could never describe the infinite degrees of I's love for you, but I'll give it a shot because, damn, woman, you're hot, and I am burning up with the passion that I must fashion into words. Words like, I love you. I love you like the big night is black. I love you like the slamming, steaming, stir-fried veggie dish because it's high vibrational food prepared with love and dead decomposed flesh as a result of violence is whack. I love you like the sun that shines on all of creation, the sinners as well as the saints. I love you like an artistic masterpiece. Yeah, like Picasso loves his paints. I love you like two raindrops falling from the sky going through high tides and low tides as they merge to become the sea. I love you like that. Never ending Nubian nappy love, you know, like Ozzy Davis had for Ruby Dee. I love you like two sun ripened grapes on the vine as they intertwine, merging the essence of their being into an elixir of ecstasy. Now, all I am seeing is you and I sharing a glass of love's wine. You see, these are the kind of thoughts that run through my mind, causing new wrinkles on my brain. And new ripples and 
new wrinkles in time. I love you like thirst in summer grass loves the morning dew. And I will continue to love you like this until your hair turns gray and then turns blue. I love you like white on rice on a white paper plate next to a glass of milk on a white table in a snowstorm. Because at 32 degrees below zero, the mere sight of you sparks a fire in my soul and makes me feel all warm and tingly. My heart begins a deep hypnotic beat like a djembe drum beneath the hand of a Naya Binky master. It gets faster and faster and faster until I get carried away, but it's all good. And by now it should be understood that all I'm really trying to say is, you are my life. I have to go. Don't be late.